A cordial greeting. Today is Friday, June 14, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 5 a.m. local time in Central America, where we are closely monitoring the future evolution of several low-pressure systems and a Central American gyre that promises to bring substantial rain and serious flooding and landslide issues across Central America and Southern Mexico. I will elaborate on where a tropical cyclone might develop, and specifically on the anticipated rainfall accumulations, especially for western Nicaragua, southern Honduras, El Salvador, and southern and central Guatemala. It is important that if you live in Central America, especially in this area, you stay very attentive to weather bulletins over the next few days. On the other hand, I will also briefly talk about Invest 90, which continues its trajectory northeast over the open waters of the Atlantic and has a low probability of cyclonic development. As you can see in the following image at 2 a.m., the National Hurricane Center maintains a 20% chance of development for Invest 90, which is located east and southeast of the United States. Fortunately, regardless of its future development, it will continue on a trajectory over the Atlantic waters and does not pose a threat to Bermuda or the eastern United States. But the situation is different in the eastern Pacific region and the Gulf of Mexico, where we continue to monitor two areas of interest for possible development. The first is located in the eastern Pacific waters and south of Mexico, where there is a 20% chance of tropical depression development in the coming days. As it moves southeast, this low pressure could eventually reach the regions of Oaxaca, Chiapas, Guatemala, or El Salvador. The good news is that for now, the probability of developing a tropical depression remains quite low. Eventually, this energy will move towards the Bay of Campeche, along with a low pressure that will develop east of Nicaragua. The interaction of both disturbances could cause the formation of a tropical cyclone in the Bay of Campeche or the southern Gulf of Mexico. Therefore, at 2 a.m., the National Hurricane Center maintains a 40% chance of development in this area. It is possible that this percentage will continue to increase over the next few days. Eventually, this system should be moving towards the states of Veracruz, Tamaulipas, or even as far north as the state of Texas, but we will analyze that later with meteorological models. I want you to see the infrared satellite image, because we can already see how humidity and instability have been increasing across Central America and Southern Mexico, where some heavy downpours are being reported across the Yucatan Peninsula, Northern Guatemala, and parts of Tabasco and Chiapas. This instability will continue to increase over the next few days, reaching its peak between Sunday, Monday and Tuesday of next week, mainly influenced by a Central American gyre establishing in the area, and a flow of moisture from the Pacific moving over the region potentially causing intense rains and possible catastrophe. We are already seeing evidence of the Central American gyre developing, where towards the northeast, we have flow moving through the Caribbean Sea, while in the eastern Pacific, a flow from the northwest is establishing, which will initiate the formation and strengthening of the gyre over the next few days. In fact, this is the reason why the low pressure located south of Guerrero will be moving southeast in the coming days, being attracted by the broader circulation associated with the Central American gyre. Before continuing with the models, I wanted you to see a bad weather area located northwest of Colombia. It is important to stay attentive to this area because a low pressure system is expected to develop, move over or near Nicaragua and Honduras, and eventually cross over the Yucatan Peninsula. This can also generate rain for this area, and then interact in the Bay of Campeche with a low pressure system located in the Pacific. Let's look at this interaction in the projections of the GFS model or the American model. See the low pressure located south of Guerrero. And as the days pass, a fairly broad circulation related to the Central American gyre is established, which helps the low pressure move southeast until eventually located south of Chiapas and Guatemala, specifically on Sunday and Monday. This is where the most intense rainfall event is expected, affecting southern Chiapas, Guatemala, El Salvador, southern Honduras, and western Nicaragua. This would be between Sunday and Tuesday of next week. Also, see the low pressure moving over the Yucatan Peninsula, creating a complex interaction typical of the Central American gyre, and eventually consolidating over the Bay of Campeche and southern Gulf of Mexico, eventually moving between Veracruz and Tamaulipas, bringing rain to eastern and central Mexico. More or less, this is also the projection of the European model. See in the afternoon hours of Sunday, the low pressure would be located south of Chiapas and Guatemala. We also see a low pressure east of Nicaragua and Honduras between Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. See the interaction of both disturbances until they eventually consolidate in the Gulf of Mexico, possibly becoming a tropical cyclone. The latest projection of the European model has a tropical storm approaching regions of Tamaulipas or even southern Texas. It is also important to mention that the models currently show a fairly broad circulation, which should prevent rapid strengthening. However, it still represents a risk of flooding, and we will be attentive to any surprises in terms of intensity forecasts.
The best bet at the moment is that a tropical storm would develop, approaching Veracruz, Tamaulipas, or southern Texas by mid-next week. But remember, this long-term projection may be subject to significant changes, so let's stay tuned over the next few days. The German model also has a similar scenario. Eventually, by the weekend, it consolidates a low pressure in the Bay of Campeche. However, it keeps it quite weak and does not give it opportunities to become a tropical cyclone before reaching Veracruz or Tamaulipas. So, we still don't have much certainty about when and where this cyclonic development will occur. Therefore, I think the National Hurricane Center will maintain a 40% probability of cyclonic development until we see a consensus among the models. Also, see the UK model, which is quite conservative. It at least has a tropical depression or tropical storm, developing by mid-next week just east of the state of Tamaulipas and Veracruz. We can appreciate this interaction between the Central American gyre and the two low-pressure systems in the GFS Ensemble model members, where the Pacific low pressure moves southeast until eventually reaching the region of Guatemala and El Salvador, while the other low-pressure system develops east of Nicaragua with a trajectory northeast. Eventually, both disturbances converge in the Bay of Campeche, where the probabilities of development are higher. Although in the long term, there is no consensus on exactly where this low-pressure system would move. Note that the interests of southern Texas, Tamaulipas, and Veracruz should stay tuned to forecasts. A similar scenario is also in the European Ensemble model members. The low pressure in the Western Caribbean Sea crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula. The Pacific low crosses over Chiapas and reaches the Bay of Campeche to then move over Veracruz or Tamaulipas. I must mention that the European Ensemble members have up to an 80% probability of developing a tropical depression by mid-next week. This probability is quite high, and as I mentioned earlier, the National Hurricane Center will likely continue to increase the probability of development over the weekend. Let's talk about our major concern, the amount of rain projected for Central America. Here we can see the GFS model projection in terms of accumulated rain. See in white and pink, representing extreme rain exceeding 300 mm. We are particularly concerned about the region of southern Guatemala, El Salvador, southern Honduras, and western Nicaragua, where this model projects between 800 and 1,000 mm of accumulated rain over the next five days. The most intense event should begin on Sunday and Monday, extending until at least Wednesday. Additionally, other regions of Nicaragua, Honduras, Costa Rica, Panama, the Yucatan Peninsula, Belize, Tabasco, Chiapas, and Oaxaca can see rainfall accumulations between 100 and 200 mm. So the risk of flooding is across this entire region but potentially catastrophic for El Salvador and surrounding areas. Our confidence in this forecast is due to other models agreeing with this projection. I repeat, if you live in the state of Chiapas, southern Guatemala, and El Salvador, you should be very attentive and preparing for an extreme rain event in the coming days. In the long term, depending on the possible development in the Gulf of Mexico, it is possible that some rain will be recorded in east-central Mexico between the states of Tamaulipas and Veracruz, and this rain can fall on cities like Jalapa, Mexico City, Querétaro, and Monterrey. Before I go, I want to invite you to make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Go to the bottom of the video to the red button that says subscribe, click it so you don't miss any of the videos. I will be recording related to this event. Also, remember to click the bell to get notifications when I record new videos. Consider supporting my project by becoming a channel member by clicking the blue button that says join, where you can see different sponsorship plans where, with a small monthly contribution, you can help Hurricane Info and receive some additional benefits. Well, with that, I say goodbye. Not before telling our friends in Mexico and Central America that here at Hurricane Info, we are committed to bringing you the latest information on this event and finally seeing if Tropical Storm Alberto will form in the Gulf of Mexico. With that, I say goodbye. See you tomorrow with a new update. Goodbye.